Time now for Sid Sixera. This is where I get 60 seconds to talk about anything. Start the clock, please. Here's what's on my mind this morning. November 13th, 2017. One of the darkest days in Italian soccer history. That's the day they failed to qualify for the World Cup in Russia. Many called it a bottom-of-the-barrel moment for that program. Whoever took over the job as manager had a big task on their hands. This was going to be a tough rebuild. Enter this guy, Roberto Mancini, styling and profiling. Plenty of experience, but the road back would be tough for Italy, or so we thought. The Italian national soccer team, under this man's watch, are now unbeaten in 33 straight games and are preparing for Sunday's Euro 2020 final against either Denmark or England. You know, COVID-19 hit every country very hard, but Italy was one of the first to really feel it. What a moment this would be for that incredible country if they could forget all the dark days for one day on and off the field by enjoying one of the brightest days in Italian sports history. Kind of feels right. Kind of feels right. Not if you're Spain, but for me, it kind of feels right. Alex Sixero from Sportsnet 590, The Fan, 680 News, and my family is joining us here on Breakfast Television. Um, Alex, that was, that, at times I was fairly one-sided yesterday. That Spanish midfield kind of ran the show. How did Italy pull it out? You know, they just found a way, and it's it's the sign of a good team that when you're not at your best, and I agree, I thought Spain should have won the game yesterday, and if, you know, if the Spanish side had any faults in this tournament, it's they couldn't find a goal when they needed it. But I think throughout this tournament, Italy have, have grown. I think they've been the most cohesive team throughout this competition. And yesterday, as you said, I mean, Danny Almo, Pedri, they were unbelievable in that Spanish midfield. But the Italians needed to find a way. They somehow got the lead on a great counterattack goal from Federico Chiesa. Spain tied it up. And then Italy just needed to find a way to grind it out. They got to penalties. Their 22-year-old keeper, Donnarumma, made a, a huge save. But again, it's the sign of a team that... They are so confident that they believed, even though they were second best yesterday, and, and they were. I saw some people suggest Italy deserved to win the game. I'm not sure I quite agree with that. But I think, as you said, under Mancini, you know, 2018, like you said, it was a huge wake-up call for them. And he came in, and he changed things up. He brought in some new players. And they just have a belief about themselves where they think they're going to win. And just look at what happened during the national anthem. You had Giorgio Chiellini, who is such a figure. He had a huge smile on his face. You had Lorenzo Insigne, who was whistling the beginning of the Italian tune. And even before penalties, I mean, they just seem so loose. You know, their their keeper, Donnarumma, had a smile on his face. Chiellini was keeping things light. They just kind of have this aura about them, Sid, where they think they can win, and they absolutely can. I think it doesn't matter who wins in today's second semifinal between England and Denmark. The Italians will be the favorites come Sunday when they play their final at Wembley. Alex, uh, before I asked you that first question, in my year, uh, I was told we have about two and a half minutes. I believe you used two minutes and 29 seconds of that. It was perfect. You have summed it up perfectly. Again, later today, the other semifinal, Euro 2020, 3 p.m. Eastern, Denmark, England. The storylines there are unbelievable. That's going to be fascinating. In 10 seconds, who wins the game? I think England does. I think they have too much going for them. Denmark have been great. They lost Christian Eriksen, their best offensive player. But I think uh, England have a little too much. So I do think it's going to be Italy-England on Sunday. That would yeah. be a great matchup. A few, a few people around the world might watch that on Sunday. Alex, <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks, brother. All right, Sid. And I say brother a lot. He's actually my brother. All right, coming up after the break on You Sound Off, where do we stand with masks? It's been a year since the mask mandate was put in place in the city of Toronto. We're just going to kind of broaden it here. Has your mentality on masks changed? 1-866-267-3797. Feedback at breakfasttelevision.ca, at Breakfast TV on Twitter, 24-7. It's 6.43, Toronto, on a Wednesday morning. Good Wednesday morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're watching BTIC.